The Wild West was the time of all kinds of oddities. In this video, we'll take a look at the 10 weirdest things to happen in the Wild West. Number 10. Wild West Saloons The Wild West Saloon was a place of contrasts. It was a place where people could come to drink, gamble, and fight, but it was also a place where people could come to relax and socialize. Saloons were often home to some of the most colorful characters of the West, and they were often the scene of some of the most memorable events in Western history. One of the most distinctive features of a Wild West saloon was its batwing doors. These doors were made of wood and swung outward, allowing for easy access to the saloon. Batwing doors were often decorated with ornate carvings or paintings, and they became a symbol of the Wild West. Another distinctive feature of a Wild West saloon was its bar. The bar was usually made of wood and was stocked with liquor, beer, and other beverages. The bar was also where people would come to gamble, play cards, and shoot pool. Saloons were often crowded and noisy places. They were filled with the sound of laughter, conversation, and the clinking of glasses. Chance for misadventure. I'm out. Well, this is well. Saloons could also be dangerous places, as fights and shootings were not uncommon. However, saloons also served as important social centers where people could come to relax and socialize. In addition to being places where people could drink, gamble, and fight, saloons were also home to some of the most colorful characters of the West. Cowboys, miners, lawmen, outlaws, and entertainers all frequented saloons. These saloons were often the scene of some of the most memorable events in Western history, such as the gunfight at the O.K. Corral. Today, saloons are still a popular attraction in many Western towns. They offer a glimpse into the past and a chance to experience the Wild West firsthand. Number 9. Wild West Outlaws The Wild West was a time of lawlessness and violence, and it is no surprise that some of the most notorious outlaws in American history emerged from this era. But there were also some oddities to be found among the Wild West outlaws, some of which are still remembered today. One such oddity was Belle Starr, a woman who became known as the Bandit Queen. Starr was a skilled horsewoman and shooter, and she led her own gang of outlaws. She was also known for her flamboyant style, and she often wore men's clothing and carried a gun. If you got a plan B, I'll kill that too! Another oddity was Big Nose Kate, a prostitute who became friends with Doc Holliday, a famous gunfighter. Kate was a tough and independent woman, and she was known for her sharp wit and her quick temper. She was also a skilled nurse, and she helped to care for Holiday during his final illness. These are just two examples of the oddities that can be found among the Wild West outlaws. These outlaws were not always the stereotypical bandits that we see in movies and television. They were complex individuals with their own unique stories. Number 8. The Pony Express The Pony Express was a mail service that operated in the American West from 1860 to 1861. The Pony Express riders rode horses across the country, carrying mail from Missouri to California in just 10 days. The Pony Express was a symbol of the Wild West and its spirit of adventure. One of the most famous Pony Express riders was William Cody, who later became known as Buffalo Bill. Cody was just 19 years old when he began riding for the Pony Express. He was known for his bravery and his ability to ride long distances at high speeds. The Pony Express was a dangerous job. Riders faced many dangers, including hostile Native Americans, bandits, and harsh weather conditions. Despite the dangers, the Pony Express riders were dedicated to their job. They helped to keep the lines of communication open between the East and West during a time of great turmoil. The Pony Express was a short-lived service, but it left a lasting legacy. It helped to unite the United States, and it helped to promote the spirit of adventure that is synonymous with the Wild West. Number 7. Deadwood Stage the Deadwood Stage was a stagecoach line that operated in the American West from 1865 to 1890. It ran between Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Deadwood, South Dakota, a distance of 200 miles. The route passed through dangerous Indian territory, and passengers often had to shoot their way out of trouble. The Deadwood Stage was a popular way to travel between Cheyenne and Deadwood during the Gold Rush years. It was also used by government officials, businessmen, and mail carriers. The stagecoaches were often attacked by Indians, and passengers often had to shoot their way out of trouble. One of the most famous attacks on the Deadwood stage occurred in 1876. A group of Indians attacked the stagecoach near Fort Laramie, Wyoming. The driver and three passengers were killed, and the rest of the passengers were taken captive. 
The captives were eventually released, but the attacks served as a reminder of the dangers of traveling through Indian territory. The Deadwood stage was a vital link between Cheyenne and Deadwood during the Gold Rush years. It was a dangerous journey, but it was also a symbol of the American spirit of adventure. Number 6. Annie Oakley Annie Oakley was a female sharpshooter who achieved fame in the Wild West. She was born Phoebe and Mosey in Dark County, Ohio, in 1860. Oakley developed her shooting skills as a child to help provide for her family. She won her first shooting contest at the age of 15, and soon after she began touring with Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Oakley was a skilled trick shooter who could hit targets with incredible accuracy. She could shoot a playing card out of the air, split a bullet with another bullet, and hit a dime tossed into the air. Oakley was also a talented horsewoman and could ride and shoot at the same time. Oakley was a popular attraction in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. She was known for her charm and her down-to-earth personality. Oakley was also a role model for women, and she showed that women could be just as skilled as men in the use of firearms. Oakley retired from Buffalo Bill's Wild West show in 1902. She and her husband, Frank Butler, settled in Greenville, Ohio. Oakley continued to give shooting demonstrations and to write about her experiences. She died in 1926 at the age of 66. Annie Oakley was a true pioneer. She broke down barriers for women and showed that they could achieve anything they set their minds to. Oakley's legacy lives on today, and she is still remembered as one of the greatest sharpshooters of all time. Number 5. Buffalo Soldiers The Buffalo Soldiers were African-American soldiers who served in the United States Army from 1866 to 1916. They were often given the most difficult and dangerous assignments, but they served with distinction and earned a reputation for bravery and skill. The Buffalo Soldiers were first formed in 1866, after the Civil War. Congress authorized the creation of six all-black regiments, the 9th and 10th Cavalry Regiments, and the 24th and 25th Infantry Regiments. The soldiers in these regiments were often called Buffalo Soldiers by Native Americans who admired their bravery and fighting skills. The Buffalo Soldiers served in many battles during the Indian Wars, including the Battle of Little Bighorn and the Battle of Wounded Knee. They also fought in the Spanish-American War, where they distinguished themselves at the Battle of San Juan Hill. The Buffalo Soldiers were eventually disbanded in 1916, but their legacy continues to inspire people today. They are remembered as heroes who served their country with honor and distinction. Number 4. Wild West Shows Wild West Shows were a popular form of entertainment in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These shows featured cowboys, Indians, and other Western characters performing stunts and reenacting famous events. The shows helped to create and perpetuate the image of the Wild West as a place of excitement and danger. One of the most famous Wild West shows was Buffalo Bill's Wild West. Buffalo Bill Cody was a real-life cowboy and Indian fighter who had participated in many of the famous battles of the American West. His show featured reenactments of these battles, as well as other Western events such as cattle drives and stagecoach robberies. Buffalo Bill's Wild West was a huge success, and it helped to popularize the image of the Wild West around the world. In addition to cowboys and Indians, Wild West shows often featured other oddities such as two-headed calves, bearded ladies, and people with physical disabilities. These oddities were often presented as curiosities or freaks, and they helped to draw audiences to the shows. Wild West shows played an important role in shaping the popular image of the Wild West. They helped to create and perpetuate the image of the Wild West as a place of excitement and danger, and they also helped to introduce the world to the cultures of Native Americans and cowboys. Number 3. The OK Corral Shootout The shootout at the OK Corral was a gunfight that took place in Tombstone, Arizona, on October 26, 1881. The shootout involved their brothers and Doc Holliday on one side and the Clanton and McClory brothers on the other. The Earps and Holiday were lawmen, while the Clantons and the McClory's were outlaws. The shootout began when the Earps and Holiday confronted the Clantons and McClory's in the OK Corral, a vacant lot. The two sides exchanged gunfire for about 30 seconds. When the smoke cleared, three of the Clanton McClory brothers were dead, while the Earps and Holiday were unharmed. The shootout was a major event in the history of the Wild West. It was one of the most famous gunfights in American history, and it helped to solidify the reputation of Tombstone as a dangerous town. The shootout also had a significant impact on the Earps and Holiday. The Earps were hailed as heroes, while Holiday was seen as a symbol of the Wild West. The shootout also made them all famous, and they would continue to be involved in other notable events in the years to come. 
The shootout at the OK Corral is a fascinating and important event in American history. It is a story of lawmen, outlaws, and the Wild West. It is also a story of violence, death, and fame. Number 2. The Lost Dutchman's Mine The Lost Dutchman's Mine is a legendary gold mine said to be located in the Superstition Mountains of Arizona. The mine is named after Jacob Waltz, a German immigrant who supposedly discovered it in the mid-19th century. Waltz kept the location of the mine a secret, and he died in 1891 without revealing its location. Since Waltz's death, thousands of people have searched for the Lost Dutchman's Mine. Some have even died in their search. The mine has never been definitively found, but there are many stories and rumors about its location. One story says that the mine is located near Weaver's Needle, a distinctive rock formation in the Superstition Mountains. Another story says that the mine is located in a cave that can only be reached by following a secret trail. The Lost Dutchman's Mine is one of the most famous treasure legends in the American West. It is a story of greed, mystery, and death. The mine may or may not exist, but its allure continues to draw people to the Superstition Mountains in search of its riches. Number 1. Camels in Texas In the 1850s, the United States government imported 400 camels to use in the American Southwest. The camels were thought to be more resistant to the desert heat and drought than horses or mules. The camels were also able to carry more weight and travel longer distances without water. The camels were first stationed at Camp Verde, Texas. They were used for a variety of tasks, including carrying supplies, transporting troops, and scouting for water. The camels were also used for scientific research. However, the experiment with camels was not a success. The camels were difficult to manage and were often seen as pests. They also competed with livestock for grazing land. By the end of the 19th century, all of the camels had been sold or released into the wild. Today, there are still a few wild camels living in the American Southwest. These camels are descendants of the camels that were imported in the 1850s. They are a rare and unique sight, and they are a reminder of a different time in American history. Do not forget to express your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell for more. Thanks for watching.